Welcome to week five, where we're going to extend our knowledge from just learning about straight lines, linear equations, to instead learning also about quadratic equations. So a quick refresher, you can see that if we have a, an equation for a line y equals x, well, we have an implied slope there of 1. And if we think about y equals mx plus b, we also are missing our constant b term, uh, which is 0 because we're actually going uh, through the y-intercept. We're intersecting the y-axis at 0. So y equals x is just a straight line. And then you remember that as we add, say, for example, the y equals mx plus b, the b term, that provides a shift of the line. In this case, it shifts it up so that the y-intercept is at 2. And we can even build upon that, and now we can see the y equals mx plus b, and we have our m term, which is our slope, and this 2 is just going to make it steeper. Um, so if we click on that, we can see, oh my goodness, we've got a new line, which is in this case not parallel to the others because it has a different slope. It has a steeper slope of 2, but it still passes through the y-intercept at positive 2. Well, interestingly, what happens, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens when we decide to add a squared term, right? In other words, we change our y equals x to y equals x squared, and it literally changes the entire shape of the graph. The graph is now what we call a parabola, and a, an algebraic equation that has a squared term as the highest order term, we call it, meaning there's nothing higher than a squared. There's no cubed. There's no to the fourth power of our variable x. But if we have just an x squared term as our highest term, then we have this is called a quadratic equation. Okay, so we have y equals x squared is a quadratic equation. And you can see it forms, it forms a parabola, okay? Now, similarly to the line, we can add parameter, we can add coefficients and an x term, a linear term, into our quadratic and have the, what we call the standard form of a quadratic equation, which is a coefficient times the x squared term plus a coefficient times the x term and then plus or minus some constant. And as you can probably imagine, we're going to see these things a factor into where this curve moves to, just like previously, um, you know, our versions up here dictated where our line moved to. So if I go ahead and click off of this parabola and onto this parabola, we'll see it not only shifted it to down, which is our constant term, but it also did some shifting to the left, and that's sort of accounted for here. And then this 2 actually made it tighter. It actually stretched it. I'll go ahead and highlight this one again, and you can see it made it tighter. And if I make it 3, you can see how it tightens it even more. And 4, even more. But if I make it only 1.5, or in the case, I did 0.2, you see it makes it very wide. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about a way to deal with these parabolas and understand how to graph them and how to understand where this really important piece is that we call the vertex, which is the very top or very bottom of this parabola. Okay, so we're going to do that over here in a different setup. Okay, standard form of a quadratic. We're going to open the standard form, and not, like I told you, there's a coefficient a on the x squared term, b on the x term, and c is our constant. Well, if we move a around, the coefficient of the x squared term, what that's going to do is it's going to stretch or widen the graph. And not only that, when it goes beyond 0 to the left to negative numbers, it's actually going to turn it and flip it upside down. So a negative value for a is going to flip it upside down. A positive value is going to make it open up. So it's either going to open up if it's a positive a, or it's going to open down if it's a negative a. So we'll put that back to 1. And if we, and if we look at c, the c term, you can probably bet, just like a line, it's going to shift it up and down. This is pretty simple. As I go up, it shifts it up. As I go down with the c values, 
we'll go down to negative 1, you see that it puts it right at negative 1. If I go down to negative 5, you see it puts it right at negative 5. So the C value is pretty easy to understand too. But here's a problem with the B value. You'd normally think the B value is just going to move it left and right. And it does, but it also moves it up and down as well as left and right. So that gets a little bit confusing. So there's no real good way to look at the, the, at the standard form. We call the standard form, this AX squared plus BX plus C of a quadratic equation and know how to precisely graph the parabola. And it's all because of this crazy B term that does, is doing funky things that makes it hard and predictable. It doesn't just move it horizontally. It moves it up and down as well. So it's hard to get our arms around. But there is a way to express a quadratic equation that's not in standard form, but that makes it very easy to graph. And that is called the vertex form. So well, let's go take a look at the vertex form instead. For the vertex form, you can see that I'm going to open up this parabola right now. Um, we've got the vertex labeled. The vertex is the top or bottom of the graph. Okay, and in the case where A is positive, right, you see A is positive, it's always going to be the bottom of the graph. Okay, but in the case where A is negative, I'm not sure why that did that. I in the case where A is negative, let's move it to negative space, you can see it opens up downward and the vertex becomes the very top or the maximum point in the graph. Okay, so let's set our vertex back to one, or excuse me, our A coefficient back to one. And you can see if it's set up in vertex form, it has this form of our coefficient A times a quantity X minus H and H will determine where it moves horizontally, that quantity squared, plus K, and K determines where it moves vertically. So now we have these nice little parameters, H and K, which will easily tell us where to place our graph and how to go ahead and graph this parabola, graph this quadratic equation. So again, A, as we talked about, determines stretch or width, and it also determines, more importantly, does it face upward or does it face downward? If it's positive, it's upward. If it's negative, it's downward. Okay. H, you can see this H term, this will determine, as H implies, horizontal. This will determine whether it goes right or whether it goes left. And you can see here I am at negative 2, and so it's moved two places to the left. But I want you to pay attention. This is X minus H. So when you see an H value of 2, you know that it's going to go the opposite direction. So what we need, this is a negative two. So this is a little, this is a little backwards, and you'll see that when you get used to it. You'll notice that when you're thinking of the value that goes into H, if you put a positive two in for H, if we put a positive two in for H, okay, that means we're saying X minus two. If we put a negative value, we're saying X minus negative two, which would make this X plus two. So you'll be thinking about that as, as you go through this. But generally speaking, you can see that the H value just moves it left and right. Okay. And then the K value, as you'd expect, just moves it up and down. And this one's very straightforward because it's plus K. So you don't have to get wrapped around like you do this minus H. But the plus K just means as you go to the right, it goes up. And as you go to the left, it goes down. All right. So that's probably enough for this. Uh, discussion, um, but I want to come back later and show you how do I take a standard form quadratic equation and turn it into this vertex form so that I can use it for graphing. Because again, it's only really it's really easy to use the vertex form for graphing. It's very challenging to use the standard form for graphing. So our next video, we'll go ahead and do that conversion.